Hey there, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you'll join me in my love of crafting and DIYs and hit that subscribe button. Today we are going to style a tiered tray with some high-end dupes. Some of the projects I do, um, I try to recreate something I saw in an ad. And then a couple are just sort of some fill-in accents. This video is part of a collaboration, which I'll tell you more about in a bit. All right, let's jump in and do the projects. This project is a chain decor piece I saw on Anthropology. I just thought it was really unique and um, very different and I liked it. For supplies, I had these chain links from my Halloween decoration that I actually got free from a free sidewalk sale years ago. Um, paint and terracotta. I had to make mine and hot glue. I did find these on Amazon. So for $11, you could get a 10 foot length of similar chain and they're already connected, which would make this project even way easier. So the first thing I did was I had to connect them and they have the gaps. And so it was a little bit difficult and there is spots that you can see it. Next, I had to make um, paint in the terracotta color. This is the first time I did it. So the first time I did it, I ended up adding baking soda for some reason in my mind. I was thinking that this was a texturized um, piece and then I got it all done and looked at the original and had remembered it completely wrong. Um, but I went ahead and left this in there. I'm going to show you the difference at the end because it, it looks kind of cool texturized as well. It's nothing like the original, but so here I am redoing. So I have glued my next set of chains together. Um, getting the paint to stick on these was a little bit hard. So I decided to go over it first with some white chalk paint, just because it sticks to things better than the acrylic paint does. And so I did paint the whole thing with the white chalk paint. And then here I am again, trying to mix that terracotta color. And I, I wish I had a recipe for you, but I don't. I brown, red, orange, and white until you get the color that most resembles it. Um, I ended up being a tiny bit off on each, but they're pretty close. They're pretty close. So, and then I painted it the terracotta color that I had created and it did take several coats. Um, I want to say I did about three coats of it on there and it ends up being a really, really shiny, cool looking thing. So here it is. And here is the difference. Theirs is $44 and mine cost me zero. Um, but could be done fairly inexpensively if you did have to buy the chain. Plus, you'd have a ton of chain to do a million of these. So here's a picture that shows the difference between the texturized one and the non-texturized one. Which do you like more? We're going to make some initials blocks. Again, I saw these on Wayfair. Um, $63 gets you the five set piece. And I just had to do these because L plus J are my husband and I's initials. Um, and so I was like, um, oh, it's just meant to be. And also it would be sweet for Valentine's day. The supplies you need for these are five, two inch wood blocks, white paint marker, white colored pencil, a letter stencil, and a sanding block. If you have, um, a Cricut or stencils or something, you could certainly use those as well. So first, um, my blocks had very sharp points, so I took a sanding block and just tried to, tried to dull the side and the edges down just on the front. Then I took some stencils I had and I drew on the blocks with a white colored pencil. So I made my J that way and then here I am making the L that way. And this was just sort of a basis. I ended up making my letters much thicker than theirs. And that's just the way I work when I, when I use, um, paint markers, I tend to get <laughs> a little heavy and they tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I should have just started with just lines. Um, and so here I am, I'm just using the same stencil, just parts of it to make the plus sign. And then I went ahead and made the arrow and here I am making the arrow head with the white and I used white um, because with the white paint marker, it's kind of hard to cover up pencil. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the end of the arrow. And I do apologize. I, I somehow lost the video of me doing part of that. So 
And then I moved on to just trace everything with my white paint marker. And it takes some time and some patience and several coats. Um, I think I did at least three coats in some areas, maybe even four. <laughs> Looking back, I wish I would have left them and quit going over them because they were, they were nice and thin and more like the original, but they turned out okay. Here they are. And then theirs was 44 and mine worked out to be $4.25. How'd I do? Today's video is a collaboration, high-end dupes, with a couple of pretty amazing ladies. Hosting the collaboration is Devin at Freckled Mom DIY, and on her channel you will see always beautiful decor that encompasses several different styles. You will also see uh, thrift flips as well as chocotour. Co-hosting the collaboration is Quinn at The Crafty Quinn, and you will always find really great Dollar Tree DIYs on her channel, beautiful decor that can be a lovely addition to almost any style. Be sure to pop on over to both of their channels. All right, back to creating. For this project, we're going to do a couple of different decorative orbs. For the first one, we are going to do a moss orb. I saw these on Wayfair. Um, you get several, and they work out to be about $9 per item, and they're 3.2 inches. So we got to work getting our supplies. Moss, a 3.8 inch styrofoam ball, glue, and a paper plate or bowl. I chose hot glue because I thought it would be less messy. Um, in hindsight, I feel like maybe putting tacky glue on with a paintbrush um, or rolling it maybe even in Elmer's glue would work better. Also, um, possibly the spray glue, but I don't, I didn't want to spray that in the house and it's super cold here. So we did hot glue. Um, it took a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. I had to do several coats. Um, but you know, I like a good mess. So here you go. And this is what it turned out like. And this is theirs versus mine. So how do you think I did? The second orb I chose to do a rope orb, only a smaller one. You need rope, a 2.3 inch styrofoam ball and glue. Again, I used hot glue. The motivation, once again, was something I saw on Wayfair. Only theirs were three for $119, so much more expensive. And they were 3.75 inches, and mine turned out to be three. So I got to work. Um, I did this the same way I did the moss orb, um, only with rope. And you just sort of start it out and then just keep circling it. Um, I used quite a bit of hot glue on the sides, um, but as I get into the middle, I sort of would wrap halfway, glue halfway, wrap halfway. But see here in the beginning, um, you really got to use quite a bit of glue. So then you just keep going around and around and around. And then when I got to the end, I just kept wrapping and then I glued it down, cut it off and then glued the tip down. And it was done. And here you go. Here is mine. And here is theirs, which work out to be $40 each versus mine, which worked out to be $1.67. What do you think? Close? So I did a couple accent pieces just to put on the tray. And the first one I did was the moss and roses. So for this, you'll need a two and a half inch terracotta pot, a dryer ball, or a 2.3 inch styrofoam ball. Hot glue gun, moss, these mini foam roses I found at Dollar Tree, um, paint and brush, and then any decorative accents you want to put on the front of the pot. So I could not find the styrofoam balls when I went to look for them initially, so I picked up these dryer balls at the Dollar Tree, and I decided to make something with them just to just to see the difference. Is it is it easier or harder than the styrofoam balls? It's pretty similar if you're using hot glue. Um, I would say with any other kind of glue that the dryer balls are going to be harder. Um, and I did have to make an, an additional coat with the dryer balls because it gets down between the, the pegs there. And then you have to do the pegs and then you have to do another coat to cover that. So it did take a little bit more time, but in a pinch it works if you can't find those styrofoam balls. Um, so then I glued it to the pot. I didn't do the very bottom with moss because you weren't going to see it. And so I glued it to the pot and then I took these 
these sweet little foam roses I found at the Dollar Tree and I glued them around randomly on the pot and I didn't do very many of them just a few it sort of reminds me of a cactus it's a rose cactus a mossy rose cactus <laughs> and then just to break up the terracotta a little bit I did a, a color of this beige around the rim and then I glued twine and I apologize I'm off the camera here but there I go sort of in there but I just wrapped and twisted twine and then glued it at the beginning and the end just to give it a little decorative accent and then I had these little flowers I've had them in my stash forever I don't even know where they came from that I glued on just to finish it off and here it is I think it turned out pretty sweet the second floral accent I did is tree branches and roses. Um, I took some of those red tree branches out of my yard that I really like. I took fake roses, twine, um, I used a rubber band just to hold it all together, and then branch or wire cutters. And so first I took some of those limbs that have been laying around and just cut them all to size. And then I took the three roses and cut them down to the same size as the sticks, um, just a little bit little bit larger because you want the roses to stick up over the edge um, and then I just took them all together and tied them together with a rubber band I first tried doing it with twine but I couldn't get it tight enough um, so I did one piece of twine and then I did a rubber band and let's see there I am doing the rubber band and then I went back around it with twine and just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I liked the look of it and then I just simply tied a knot on the front. <laughs> My son is helping. You'll see his little hands in the videos quite a bit. Um, and then I ended up having to go back and cut those shorter. And so this is me sticking the flowers back in after I had to go dip and cut all the branches shorter. <laughs> My little helper there. Um, and then just getting it the way I want. He's swiping the ends of my sticks. And then there you go. All done. I'm happy with it. I think it turned out very rustic looking. All right, here it is all together um, on my tiered tray. And I really like the way it all came together. My husband and I got married in a garden in the mountains. And it's such a whimsical place that we sometimes visit when we're back in our home state. So I kind of wanted to pull all of those natural elements together, sort of combined with things you might see in a whimsical mountain garden. So what do you think? How did I do? Do you have a favorite? If so, be sure to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and check the description box so that you can see everyone else's projects on the playlist. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video with me today. And thank you to Devin and Quinn for hosting such a fun challenge. Thanks so much. Again, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.